Hey everyone and happy Monday. Tara Talmadge and Mike Irwin here for our weekly edition of Ask Mike. Can you imagine what this show would be like if Texas won? Oh. We'd, be, we'd be like just down. Don't even We're want like, to think about it. We'd, it'd be like a 10 minute show. <laughs> it would be. All the questions would be pretty quick, yeah, I'm assuming. Just, ah, here's the answer. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but well, we got some good questions and some exciting things to talk about, of course, because thankfully Absolutely. it didn't go that way. And our first question this week is from Alex Four Hogs 88, who wants to know where does this win over Texas rank in your favorite wins versus UT? You know, I got to put it at the top. Love it. Yeah, that's big time. Yeah, because for several reasons. First of all, this whole Texas rivalry thing, and, and this is just me talking. I, okay. I'm not saying everyone thinks this, but I got annoyed when this game first, when people started first talking about this game, because you've got this split between Razorback fans, the older fans who mm -hmm. really want to beat Texas and they don't like them. And you had all these on social media, you had all these younger fans going, ah, it's not that big a deal, Texas rivalry, yeah, that's, that's in the past, we don't care about that. And then it kind of changed with this Southwest Conference, I mean, with this uh, Texas and Oklahoma moving to the, the SEC. SEC. Kind of changed the, the dynamics a little bit. And then it built up. And then when the actual game was played, and, and it was just amazing. It just turned back into what it always right. was. It was like you just turned the clock back and you had a chance to show everybody this is what this game was all about. I love that. It's not dopey. It's not in the past. <laughs> it's, not it's absolutely awesome because Arkansas has not had a rival like that in the uh -huh. SEC. That's the one thing I kept saying. I said, what's wrong with being in the SEC? You don't have anybody you just really hate like the University <laughs> of Texas. Oh, it's LSU. It's Missouri. No, no, it's not even close. And so that game showed it. Mm -hmm. the, there has not been that atmosphere in Reynolds Razorback Stadium since at least the 2010 Alabama game. When they almost beat Alabama, that was sort of like that. I but can that, imagine. But yeah. that's what that did, first of all, is it brought that rivalry back. And, and, it, and now, in three or four years, we're going to see it every year. So that's so a good exciting. thing. <laughs> the second thing is all the publicity that Arkansas got around the SEC, mm -hmm. because we've talked about the SEC, the average fan think, yeah. Arkansas. Remember the yeah. Saturday Down South story a few weeks ago where the guy said Arkansas might get kicked out if they kept expanding because they're so oh, crummy in football. That. Yeah. And so there's all that attitude about Arkansas is nothing. Well, all of a sudden, around the SEC, everybody's looking at that game going, oh, we can't let, we can't let uh, Texas come in here and embarrass an SEC member. This is embarrass our league. So it was real important for Arkansas to win that game, and they lived up to it. They not only won the game, it was pounding Dominant. Them. So all around the SEC, Arkansas got great publicity from that win. Yep. And it sort of helps counter that kind of bad image they'd had, especially last two years of Bielema and then the Chad Morris. I mean, the image of this program was just like, Bleh. Yeah. So that was another reason why it was the best ever. And then, you know, Sam Pittman's attempt to turn this program around, which I, when you go back and look a year ago or so at him, trying to turn around what was essentially four awful years of football. Yeah. And especially the last two when you won two games each of those two years and no SEC games. And you're thinking to yourself, how in the world does he do this? It's going to take a while. You would think. And then it was sort of promising last year, but there were so many things like the all-SEC schedule was tough. And then the cheating thing at the end of the Auburn game, which they really oh. won that game. And then the whole COVID thing with LSU, which was, I don't want to get into all that, but that was <laughs> bad. And then the weird thing, Grant Morgan has to happen to get hurt right in the late third quarter of the Missouri game, or they would have won that game. Mm -hmm. So last year could have been so much better, but it was Good. at least an improvement. Yeah. Now this year, you got to move forward. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, you got to win that game. And they did. That's so awesome. it really does move his efforts forward. And yeah. now with a week, you know, to go play a non-conference game. Then you go back and beat a and Now you've taken some really giant steps toward getting this program back where it needs to be. And those things impact recruiting, and that's yeah. where it really does get better. So for all of those reasons, yeah, that was the best win ever. And you think about it, it's only been 12 games for Sam Pittman. Absolutely. 12 games, and he's gotten them ranked. And he's already beat Texas. I mean, that just that just wins you over. Yeah. With it. Not that he needed any help, but no. now Razorback fans are just like, I mean, he could be elected president, right? <laughs> All right. Well, we have kind of the same question asked in a little bit more of a creative way here. Uh, Grover Craigswine wants to know, on a scale from the 
Millennium Mauling to the ambush in Austin. How would you rank the beatdown on those burnt orange clowns with the see-through football pants to our Southwest? I apologize for not even being able to type their their team name. The hatred runs generations deep. Jeez, that's okay. Great. Well, the, um, <laughs> the Millennium win would be the 2000 Cotton Bowl, the the Y2K Bowl, or whatever okay. you wanted to call it, and that was okay. That's but Texas didn't want to play in that game. They'd gotten beat by OU. They were down, you know, and, that, and because of that, the Cotton Bowl couldn't invite a better team with a better record than Arkansas. So it was like, golly, now we got to play in the Cotton Bowl against <laughs> this rotten team. Yeah. And they just did. They weren't fired up, and Arkansas jumped all over. Okay. And that was okay, but that's not like this. This is more like that ambush in Austin, mm -hmm. because. That was a thing where you're just embarrassing Texas. That's what happened with Matt Jones that year in Austin. They just, it was, I think, at 2003 or something. They just, he just made them look silly. He just, yeah. he, all these things we saw, we all knew Matt Jones could do. He made Texas fans see that. He's just out ran, running all of their defensive backs, just running right by <laughs> him and doing all this stuff. So that was, that was fun, and that really felt more like this one, but this one was beyond that. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I, I, it was definitely a lot of fun. I'm sure we still probably have plenty of questions in here about Texas as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, here we go. Parallax Pig says, Saturday's Texas game was listed as a sellout, but only ninth largest crowd in history. Did expansion shrink the stadium or past accounting of crowd size were overstated? Uh, this I'm a, always kind of surprised by that, This too, is a honestly. mystery to me, and I haven't gotten an answer from the athletic department yeah. yet. And as soon as we, maybe next week we'll pass it along yeah. and we get an answer. But at the time, the, I believe the largest crowd is that 2010 Alabama game. That's hmm. the one I remember. Okay. And at the time, the stadium was capacity was 72,000. Well, they claimed they got to 76,000, right. but there's a flat area on top of the south end zone. It's, it, yeah. it really holds a lot of people if you go up there and stand up there. So they apparently sold standing room only tickets up there, mm -hmm. and they claimed they got it up to 76,000. Well, now, if you got almost 76,000 as a normal capacity, why wouldn't you go above that? Right. Because then you could do the same thing and still sell standing room only crowd uh, tickets, which they apparently did. Mm -hmm. And now you've got a flat area on top of the north end zone where you can do that too. Yeah. The only thing I can figure out is one of two things. Either they fudge the numbers <laughs> in 2010 or maybe you don't have as many standing room only people. I didn't look at maybe. the crowd on top of the south end zone. I don't know if it was just totally full. at the north end zone and it, it definitely wasn't full. Yeah. I will say that. Um, there were there were still plenty of people up there, but, but it wasn't packed. Theoretically, I think that place holds right around 74, 75,000 now. So if they just had a full capacity, they should have been close right there. Yeah. So again, it's a little bit of a mystery. Maybe we'll know by next week. I just couldn't get an answer yeah. from anybody uh, this week. Stadium felt like it was at capacity, though, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, TL Slayton on Facebook asks, what surprised you most about the blowout over Texas? You know, it had to be the running backs and the running yeah. game. I mean, I, I knew that. that was probably Arkansas' strength, but I didn't really. All through the um, through August camp, and you get this preseason hype, and I'm, I'm old and I get cranky about hype <laughs> because I'm sitting there going, come on, you can't just assume something. Yeah. Everybody's assuming Ole Miss is really, really good this year. Well, come on, let's wait a while. We're two games in, folks. Everybody's assuming all this <laughs> stuff. So I kept hearing all this about, oh, we got all these running backs, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, well, Traylon Smith is a proven guy. Absolutely. So they need maybe one other guy behind him. And mm -hmm. who is that? Maybe Rocket Sanders. I don't know. And I, I'm just kind of ignoring all this. Oh, there's actually four guys back there. Yeah. But then this is what we saw in this game. You had all four of them, Traylon Smith, Rocket Sanders, Dominic Johnson, A.J. Green, all scored touchdowns. Yeah. And they were all impressive. Yeah. And what that reminds me of is, is uh, when Houston Nutt had uh, those three running backs, Felix Jones and Darren McFadden and um, I'm going brain dead, uh, Peyton Hillis. They had all those guys and had such a running game. Well, now here's four guys. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they're going to equal those guys, but I would say right now, it's still early, 
But if they keep doing what we saw in this game, Arkansas could end up maybe with one of the deepest running back rooms in the country. There's they a, could. There's a lot of guys back there, and uh, yeah. I think he's going to play them all. Kendall Bryles is a big Dominic Johnson fan. Yeah, he and, is. and Pittman is, and he's, too. He said it before. And what I liked about him was what he did on the goal line. This has been a problem. This has been a problem on the goal, on the goal line. line. So yeah. you, you, had to, you had to like what he did. And, and Traylon Smith just flying into the end zone. That was, oh, yeah. that was pretty nice, too. Was nice. <laughs> All right, Lanny says, I still hear a lot of talk from fans that Jefferson is not the right fit at QB. I like him. There have been some issues, but overall, I think he's settling into that job really well. What do you think? You know, yesterday with, with Alyssa, we were on set. Mm -hmm. I sort of compared uh, KJ to my lawnmower engine oh, yeah. when I started up every spring because you know it's been sitting though. there all winter and you kind of start it up plop 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 yeah. plop and then it starts up and it goes a few little and then it sputters some more yep. and then, and then it after just... you use it for a few times it gets back to where it normally right. was. The issue I think is this in Kendall Bryles offense you have to really be able to read a defense and process mm -hmm. those RPOs. Yeah. You, you know you got to decide okay your hand is right here do you give it to Traylon Smith going that way? Or do you pull it out and go that way if you're the quarterback? Or if you're KJ, do you pull it out and stand up and throw a pass? Yeah. So all of that is based on what you see. And, and it's so fast. DJ Williams did a really good job in our breakdown of our game day show, going back with the Rice game and showing, oops, uh, he's got the ball here, Traylon Smith could, can, he can give it to Traylon Smith. He can go over here. And, and guess what? Rice, because they were going tempo, didn't get a guy on the field in time. He's all the way over here. There's nobody on this side. Just give it to him. And he goes he's around got, the right yeah. side and he's gone. But instead, KJ pulls it out and throws it over here. And the guy who's coming onto the field <laughs> is the one that makes the play because he's out of position, but yep. he's in position based on what KJ did. Mm -hmm. And that's just one example of mistakes that he made where he read this incorrectly. Well, to me, this is sort of like a lot of football is reaction stuff and you yeah. just have to get where you can, you don't think about it. You just get it and you instinctively go, oh, oh, yeah. and you do that. And he's got to get there. Yeah. Now he struggled, <clears throat> excuse me, he struggled in the first half against Rice. Against Texas, it was down to more like one quarter. And been, yeah. his numbers went way up. His quarterback rating against Rice was 55.4. <laughs> against Texas, it was 83.5. Wow. So that went up. That was a big jump. His passing percentage went from 55% to 72%, even yeah. though he didn't throw a lot of passes. So the big thing is right now he's averaging 80 yards rushing a game. How many quarterbacks do that? I mean, he's already probably in the next game is going to break the record for the most number of rushing yards by a quarterback since Matt Jones. I didn't know that. So the guy's got some wheels and, too. And think about how weird this was because I'm watching the game on TV. You guys are at the yeah. game. I'm watching it on TV. And the announcers start off talking about how badly he's struggling blah, 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 and he's having all these problems. And then by the end of the game, I mean, <laughs> they turned him into some, somebody totally different. They talk, yep. They're talking about he's Cam Newton. Oh, so he ooh. goes from being, oh, yeah, he's well, got all these problems to he becomes Cam Newton. Eh, so, I mean, you know, I just yeah. think he's settling in, like Lanny said. Yeah. And so now what does he have? He has a week. And, and I'm not overlooking, you know, this, this game this weekend, but let's say he uses this game to get a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Then he goes into the A&M game, and maybe there's not, not those nerves. Yeah. And the A&M game is where he could really, really show something. So yeah. we'll hope that happens. But I think he's going to be fine. Yeah, and I do think that one of the things they've always been saying is once he gets running, he gets more confident, he gets more comfortable. And that's and something that I think. And one really good pass, one deep ball. Yeah, Tyson Morris. Tyson Morris. He's going to be the guy, I think, for a, you well, know, kind you, of shifting the momentum. What's Traylon Burks thinking right now? Because it's, it's right. supposed to be his big year, and so far it's been, it's been pretty been, quiet for him. Yeah, so he's so. got to have a breakout against the Aggies. That would be nice. I think we'd all be on board with that. Okay. Now, remember when Twinkie275 <laughs> <laughs> predicted that three weeks ago on Ask Mike that Arkansas would go 11 and 1 this season? Which, by the way, that is a very bold claim right there. He's back at it. He says, I still believe an 11 and one season can happen, though anything above six and six would be phenomenal. If we do just say 
in make-believe land with the loss to Bama, would we be a contender in the playoffs or not? Okay, I'm going to have to go into make-believe yeah, land. Yeah, I was like, I'm make with, I'm with him in make-believe land. If all they land, do is lose to Alabama. Don't, don't, don't get mad at me because I'm entering make-believe <laughs> okay. land. If that happened, if Arkansas's only loss was to Georgia, here's what it would be. Alabama. Blow. No, Georgia. He said Alabama. Oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alabama. They beat Georgia. Yeah. So if that's what it is, here's what it would boil down to. If Arkansas loses to Alabama, then, then Alabama goes to the SEC championship mm -hmm. game. I'm assuming Georgia wins the East, so right. it's Alabama-Georgia. If Georgia beats Alabama, no, Arkansas is out because yeah. it would be Alabama and Georgia. It just yeah. would be. But if Alabama beats Georgia and Arkansas has already beaten Eight Georgia, out. then I think they would get in. In the dream world, 11-1 and one <laughs> regular season. Well, I mean, they're on the right path. <laughs> we'll say so that far, we're two games in, but yeah. So far, they're, they're on. Hey, you know what? Twinkie 275, we're all pulling for you. Yeah. We're hoping you're right on this. Uh, we'll blood have to eat our words if he, if he ends up being right. We'll have to, like, bring well, him in I, here. I was about to say, we're going to bring this guy in here yeah. by some lottery tickets and all the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> blood Red Hog has our next one and says, Gene Chizik on SEC Now said, Arkansas was the most improved SEC team from week one to week two. Was Texas overrated? Or are the Hogs potentially a top three team in the West? Uh, Texas is probably a little bit overrated. I, I've watched them, and I don't think they're just going to have an awful season. I no. think they'll bounce back from this. I don't think they were ready for a road game. I don't think they were ready for how bad Arkansas hated them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they learned a lesson from that. So I think when it's all said and done, I don't think they'll win, you know, the Big 12, but I think they'll be all right. Yeah. So I don't think it was so much that. Now, how does Arkansas get top three? Um, I've kind of looked at this. Here's the deal. You've got A&M, LSU, Ole Miss, and Auburn. Arkansas, I think, to end up in the top three would have to win three of those four games. Okay. They win three of those four games, and they beat Mississippi State and Missouri. I think they could end up even top two, but definitely top three. But that's a tall order. That is. A&M, LSU, Ole Miss, and Auburn. Which ones do you think they would win? <laughs> I don't know, but that's that's going to be tough. I mean, so when you get excited and start talking yeah. top three in the SEC, that's that's what you're looking at. And by the way, uh, you know, Texas has already announced they're starting Casey Thompson at quarterback this week. You have to wonder what would happen if he had started in the first place because he yeah. had pretty good, good success against Arkansas. He did. All right, Alice Radler on Facebook wants to know, what's the next big step for Arkansas after the Texas win? That's a pretty easy one. I, I think it's A&M. Absolutely. The, that's, you know, you, you, you do make sure that you take care of business this week. With Georgia Southern. Yeah. And then if you beat A&M, you've done a couple of things. You've, you've gotten rid of that stupid losing streak. <laughs> And then you've just moved to 4-0, and oh, which puts yeah. you in a really good position. I think it starts to help recruiting. Absolutely. I think the fans start going nuts. And then they start b believing that this top three in the SEC West could happen. Could happen. So that's the next step. Take care of business this week, but mainly beat A&M next week. That would be epic to beat A&M. All right. Great. Pork Belly says... This may be a silly question, but what kind of watch does Coach Pittman wear? I like it. <laughs> okay, I think we got a. I think we got a picture of this watch that that uh, Nick Petricioni took when he was at the yeah. press conference today. So we'll show that to you. It is a Casio G-Shock. You know, thinking about that, and I haven't thought much about watches that coaches wear. But you'd think, okay, these coaches all make multi-million dollar, have multi-million dollar contracts. So you'd think, okay, they're going to wear a Rolex or, a, or an Omega watch. or something like that. There's a bunch of other expensive yeah. watches. But this is kind of like Sam Pittman to me. Mm -hmm. You got a Casio. It's, it, it does a lot of really weird stuff. They got all got these different dials and buttons, buttons and things that he can use. <laughs> and uh, so if you're interested, yeah, if you want to have a watch that Sam Pittman has, go find yourself a Casio G-Shock. Casio G-Shock. And run it on military time. <laughs> Pork Soda has the next question today. Mike wants to know which running back were you most impressed with? Well, we already talked about it. I think it was Dominic Johnson. It yeah. was strange because Sam Pittman kept talking about him in August camp. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. They got all these other guys. Here's what, what's so good about him. He's just a brute in the red zone. Yep. And Arkansas has had red zone problems. Um, there, was a, there was a point in that game 
where they had the ball somewhere around the 12, 13 yard line and on first down Traylon Smith went down and it was like second and three. And I'm thinking, you just bring Dominique in. If he can't, I guarantee you he can get three he yards. Just barrels and two his way. He's, he's probably yeah. going to score there. Instead, they threw a pass to the tight end, and and then KJ overthrew one in the, in the goal line. All of a sudden, you got to kick a field goal. I mean, that's what this guy is there for. Right. You're down inside the ten yard line. It's him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've never, I haven't seen him yet get pushed back. I mean, he's always gaining yards. He's just a brute, and he can run too. So. He's the guy that right now impresses me the most. Hey, I'm glad we got a look at A.J. Green, though. There was oh, yeah. a lot of hype surrounding him coming <laughs> into the season. And it was, we, we didn't get to see a lot of him in yeah. camp, but the, he's got moves and quick feet. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, He could be big for them. Really, you just look at all of them. I mean, yeah. it, really, why does there have to be a best? They're I know. Just, they're just all good. Yeah, I think uh, when we were all a little bit concerned about no Rakeem Boyd, we're, yeah. everyone can be at ease now, so we're good. <laughs> all right. At Bally Brooks asks, can you give us an update on Grant Morgan? You know, they never did say what the specific injury was. Right. It looked like either a knee or an ankle, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, Coach Pittman was asked about that in his Monday press conference. He said he's day to day. He said on Monday's practice, they're going to let him practice, see what he can do, and then kind of proceed based on that. Yeah. Now, I would say this. This is, you know, this is me speculating, but. If there's any kind of an issue, I think they'll be very careful with him. Arkansas has got tremendous so. depth at linebacker. Hayden Henry has just come out of nowhere yeah. to be a dominant linebacker. He's what, the something of the week? Oh, yeah. He's one of the SEC like defensive players well, of the week or something. Well, I think he was winning or... like a national, won some national award or something. Yeah, I can't remember which one Anyway, it is. He's, he's, he's gotten just, a lot of stuff just, because of it. He had a good he game against tackles. Rice. He had 15 tackles. He had a good game against Rice, and he was really good in this game, and he's mean. Yeah. He's, he like, likes, to, likes to knock running backs down and then stand over them. That's, <laughs> he's got to stop that because that can yeah, get don't, you a penalty. We don't need that. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's been impressive. So, you know, I just uh, I, I, th I think you've got enough depth there mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily have to play Grant Morgan in this game. And I'm not saying he won't play, but if there's any kind of an issue, I think what they'll do is rest him for A&M. Right. And I will say, I mean, I was watching him once he was off the field, and he was in that tent, that injury tent, for quite some time. However, he did come out and looked good to me. Okay. Walking around and everything like that doesn't seem like anything was bothering him, so that's a good sign. At Mousetown says we need another funny Texas Arkansas game story from you Mike Man, this is going to be hard to explain so we've got a visual yeah it's not a real Texas Arkansas game it is the it is the photoelectric football version okay. of it. let me explain this in 1969 which was the year of the 69 Arkansas shootout I'm living in an apartment with with three guys and all of us are planning to be high school football coaches, and we know a bunch of other guys that are doing that. So we got eight guys together, and we each picked a Southwest Conference team, and then we, we played photoelectric football every okay. Sunday. <laughs> a lot of us worked on Saturday, so we couldn't play the game that week. Right. On Saturday, so we'd play it in our apartment, had a big table in the living room, and we'd set this thing up. It's a big box, and you push it, put cards in for offense and defense, and you pull out a little drawer, and it, there's a light in there, and it's kind of like a silly 60s version of a video game. A little yeah. line goes like the wiggly, and, and then when it runs through little dots on the defense, you could have a tackle <laughs> or a fumble, or if you throw a pass, it could be a completion or an interception. That's pretty fun. So that part of it was all strategy, but then there was the, the, the other part of it was pure luck. And that is you have these little spinners, and you, have, you spin for punts, how far your punt is, punt returns, kickoffs, kickoff returns, and field goals, and extra points. That's all just pure luck. You just spin. Yeah. Oops, you <laughs> just, just like that. You just spin and see what happens. So we decide we're playing that, that year, that 69 college football season. So everybody's schedule, if you, and I was the Texas Tech guy. I was J.T. King, I think, as a Texas Tech coach. My buddy, who was always a Razorback fan, he's Frank Broyles. And so we get down to that last game that was played in the regular season that year, and that was Texas versus Arkansas, and it was on December 6th. Well, my buddy who's a Razorback fan, and he's Frank Broyles. He's supposed to be Frank Broyles. He's got a bad case of the flu, and he can't Ooh. do it. 
So he thinks he's going to have to forfeit, and everybody's like, no, no, we can't have can't a forfeit. So we all get together and decide what we're going to do. And they ask him, and he's coughing and gasping. He says, let Mike be Frank Broyles. Gotcha. The other guy was Daryl Royal. And uh, we're going up against each other now. I have to say that he just destroyed me <laughs> in the strategy part. I mean, his running game was better. He's, he was throwing passes and completing on me. I was picking the wrong defense. Uh -huh. And I would have got beat probably two or three touchdowns. But the spinning part of it that's just pure luck. Oh man, I just Did it was like going to Vegas and just coming up big and you're, <laughs> and you're just totally lucky. I mean, he spun into like a fumble on a kickoff. Oh. He, he he missed a field goal. He got a punt blocked. All these terrible things are happening to him. He's just spinning. I can't believe that. That's <laughs> And so then good things are happening to me. I'm spinning cook kickoff returns for touchdowns and Love it. kicking long field goals and all this stuff. So in the end, I beat him because I just got lucky. Well, you he's take the really, win. He's really mad. And he's a Texas guy. He's a Longhorn guy. He accuses me of rigging the spinners because it was our game in yeah. our apartment. I'm going, how can I do that? Yeah. I said, spin it yourself. See what you, yeah, it's got, I, didn't have, I, can't, I don't have the how expertise rig to rig the yeah. spinner. But he was mad at me for like two months and accused wow. me of cheating because that's what Longhorn guys oh. do. They don't accept defeat. <laughs> they just they just say, you must have cheated. Are, are you just referencing that because of Sark and what he said? Absolutely. <laughs> By Pretty. the way, he did. He just basically said, we didn't lose. We just yeah. beat ourselves. Arkansas didn't beat us. So I will say that. That's what that's that's this guy out. was doing. It couldn't possibly be. I had to have cheated in order for that to happen. Jeez. Well, now I know I'm not playing board games. With and then I went back <laughs> to being J.T. King the next year, and my buddy was back being Frank Broyles. Oh. Huh. Well, so if you played it again, would you be Frank Broyles? Oh, yeah. yeah. If I played, in fact, <laughs> I wish I had one of those games. I could, it's fun. Yeah. Well, maybe we should find one and bring it in here sometime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it uh, for this well, what? Wait, we got, remember the Oh, yeah. We have one more thing I forgot. Um, we have a picture from a couple weeks back. One of the guys wrote in and asked what was uh, Sam Pittman's middle name. He wanted to name his son after Sam Pittman. We learned that Sam's name is Samuel Don Pittman, correct? That's correct. So he sent us this Photoshop picture. It's got his son's name on it, mm -hmm. which is uh, it's Samuel Walker. Okay. And uh, I guess he decided he didn't want Don after all. You know what? <laughs> that's okay. It's still Samuel. That's, that's a big honor. Yeah. So... so so congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure when that child and when that young boy, that boy, that baby, baby boy is gonna supposed be. to be born. But when he is, he's got the name Sam. Sam. Love Samuel. It. Samuel and Walker. And then the last Yeah, name. we're, we're going to have to find a way to let Sam Pittman know about that, too. Yeah, well, it's pretty next cool. time we see him, we'll let him know. So, again, congratulations. And everyone, thank you so much for watching this week's edition of Ask Mike. We'll see you back here again next Monday.